some 8,000 have gathered to watch this NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. And the mood here is certainly one of excitement because all these fans are hoping that their Lady Utes will make it seven national titles in a row. Certainly an unprecedented accomplishment. Hello, everybody. I'm Ann Butler. And with me today is 1984 Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson. And Kathy, although Utah certainly does have the home court advantage, this year that might not be enough of an edge to really pull it off, right? You're right, Ann. Utah has definitely developed a dynasty in women's gymnastics, but I think this is going to be their toughest battle ever. They're ranked third, coming in behind UCLA and Alabama. UCLA is probably the most talented of the teams. Greg Marsden feels he's got the best team he's ever had. But I feel the entire field is strong, so it's really anyone's ball game. I can't, can guarantee this, though. I think it's going to be the closest national championship we've ever seen. You got to remember one thing. It's tough to beat Utah in Utah. Well, certainly the enthusiasm of this huge crowd attests to that. And later on, we'll be back not only with the women's team competition, but the individual and all-around competitions as well. We are in Salt Lake City, Utah for the NCAA women's individual and all-around competition. Remember the name, Kelly Garrison Steves. She's a sophomore from the University of Oklahoma, and she's this year's all-around winner. Here turning in a 9.6 on the vault, Kathy Johnson. The all-around combines the scores of all four disciplines, vault, uneven bars, balance beam, and floor exercise, and Kelly doesn't have a weak event. Here proving her form with a 9.7 on the uneven parallel bars. Now, Kelly's best event is balance beam, although she did have a fall from this event. But that was still good enough for a 9.25, and that was good enough for her to walk away with it all. So, Kathy, are we likely to see Kelly in 88 at the Olympics? And it's very possible. Kelly has been a strong member of our national team for several years, and in fact competed in world championships many times. She's looking stronger than ever and adding difficulty to all of her routines. So it's very possible we might see her in 88. And as far as the individuals were concerned, other names moved into the forefront. Like Yumi Mordre from the University of Washington, the first ever to win two NCAA individual titles. First here with a 9.5 performance on the vault. This was an incredible vault. Handspring front pike with a half twist. And Yumi followed that right up with a stellar 9.65 on the balance beam. And then there was the University of Georgia's Lucy Wiener, who took home her second straight title on the bars with a 9.7. But the woman who stole the show was a freshman from UCLA named Kim Hamilton. She was magical on this event. She had perfect landings on all her tumbling castles. Pike double back. She has very original choreography. More importantly, though, she has the audience in a spell. It's her second tumbling run, a tuck double, perfect landing again. And later on, toward the end of her routine, she really poured it on. Notice all the good landings on the tumbling passes. Now watch his triple turn. Perfect execution. Performance quality is superb. What a sparkling finish by UCLA's Kim Hamilton, who certainly captured the imagination of this crowd. Salt Lake City, Utah is on its feet. And she's also captured the highest score ever on the floor. And the crowd went crazy. What did you do? I cried. <laughs> I was so happy. And I was glad that everybody else thought my performance was great, too. So congratulations to Kim Hamilton. She's off to a great start in her first year at UCLA. And we'll be back with the team competition later on. City, where 12 schools have earned the right to compete in this 1987 NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championships. And the top six seeds go head-to-head -head in a single session. They are UCLA, Alabama, Utah, Arizona State, Georgia, and Florida. And they'll be competing in these four different events, the vault, uneven parallel bars, balance beam, and floor exercise. And in the first rotation, it's Georgia on the vault, Alabama on bars, Florida on the balance beam, and Arizona State on the floor. And both UCLA and Utah are standing by. And Kathy Johnson, what's it like to have to wait to compete to take a bye right off the bat? Personally, I, I never like sitting out taking a bye. You, you start thinking too much. I like to just get going and keep it going. 
So while Utah and UCLA sit, first up on the floor, Marika Lasur from Arizona State. And she opens with a triple twist. That's a very difficult tumbling pass, and she did it quite well. This is ASU's seventh straight appearance here at Nationals. They've never won a team title, but they've placed in the top five every year, and they were last year's runner-ups. Here's her middle tumbling run, a double twist. Now, there in the background, you see Gina Bignales from Georgia sprinting down the vault runway. All four events are going on at the same time here in the arena, so we'll be going back and forth. Marika's performing quite well. She has a little trouble with her feet. I'd like to see more extension in the toe point. Interestingly enough, Marika is back in her hometown of Salt Lake City. This is where she went to high school. Preparing for her last tumbling run. Round off, whip over, two back hands rings to a full twist. She could have been a little higher on that full twist. Overall, a steady performance. Arizona State freshman Marika Lasur, one of the most talented newcomers here at Nationals. Kathy, should she be proud of that performance? I believe so, especially starting with the triple twist. Now, this is her last tumbling run. Round off, whip over, or called an alternate pass. Through to a layout with a full twist. Now, notice she had to pike down a little bit, lacked a little height. And a 9-4 for Marika Lasur from Arizona State. And here's Gina Bignales with Georgia coach Suzanne Yachlin taking a look at her 9.55 vault score. We'll look at her first of the two vaults, and in vaulting, you're allowed to do two vaults, the best score counting. This was her best vault, Sukahara, with a full twist in the tuck position. Beautiful landing. All right, next up on the uneven parallel bars, Marie Robbins, University of Alabama freshman. Marie's quite strong on this event. She has excellent form. It's a giant swing. Right into a reverse heck. Well done. Drops to the low bar. She moves quite well from bar to bar. Free hip to handstand. Another giant swing. And a tuck double flyaway. Boy, she really sticks that Great landing, job. doesn't she? A lot of good work in that bar routine. Let's take another look. This big release move, it's called a reverse heck or tkachev. She flies backwards over the bar and re -grass. We're starting to see a lot of these big tricks now in collegiate gymnastics, and it's really exciting. So Alabama is off to a great start as Marie Robbins turns in a 9.55 on the uneven bars. And after this first rotation of competition, Georgia is off to an early lead, but just five hundredths of a point behind is the Crimson Tide and then Arizona State. Hello once again, everybody. I'm Ann Butler, and joining me today is Kathy Johnson, 1984 Olympic silver and bronze medalist and captain of the women's gymnastics team. And Kathy, you know, during this first rotation today, both Utah and UCLA have been on by, so we're still waiting to see them perform, the two pivotal teams of this championship. Because of the strength and tradition of the Utah gymnasts, they're really expected to win a seventh straight national title. However, UCLA is the favorite. Arizona State has beaten Utah twice, and we have three very strong teams from the Southeastern Conference. So it's still wide open. But I'd like to take it, go out on the limb and say, I think it's still going to be a battle between UCLA and Utah. Well, speaking of battles, Kathy, as you know, UCLA was here in Utah just a couple of months ago and turned in which were, what was, frankly, an embarrassing performance. But when we spoke with Bruin coach Jerry Tomlinson, he was very encouraged. And he said that since that disastrous day here in Utah, the whole team has developed a brand new attitude. That big stumble was, was a just like the bottom falling out of a bucket to them. They, they came back and said, what happened? And they really had no clue. The team now, I can feel a lot more confidence coming from them. Um, a lot of the reporters this weekend have been telling me their t kids sure seem relaxed. It's, oh, good, you know, that's a first. Well, right now, Coach Tomlinson is anything but relaxed as his Bruins and the champion Utes prepare for action and we return. This CBS Sports Saturday special... Just who are the unbeatable Lady Utes? Well, it's something to do with sports, but I don't know anything about it. A basketball team? An unbeatable what? Boy, you've got me. I don't know. 
What are they? I don't know. Well, if the bus driver didn't know who they are, maybe he can take us where they are. Just follow the arrows. Make a left at the falls, and you're right smack in the middle of it. Lady Ute territory. Oh, the, gymnastics the gymnastics team. team, of course. The gymnasts. Oh, the, the University of Utah gymnastics team. They're number one. All right. Recognition at last. But just so you know, we're the Lady Utes. Um, we've won six national championships, and we're going for a seventh. Um, we can be beat, but it'll be we're tough. We're not gonna let it. Once more, all together now, who are the unbeatable lady youths? There's a girl in the gymnast team! <laughs> well, there's a man who knows the youth certainly better than anybody else. He's head coach Greg Marsden, under pressure right now to win an incredible seventh straight title. So once again, after the first rotation, Georgia off to an early lead. And as the second round gets underway, we'll see UCLA on the vault, Georgia on the bars, Utah on the beam, and Florida on the floor. And first... On the vault for UCLA, Kim Hamilton, who's a freshman. This is a great event for UCLA to start out on. We've got a lot of potential high scores here. Kim's doing a handspring front. Great landing. Good height on the vault as well. Once again, the best of two vault scores will count. Right? That's correct. And a 9.5 on the vault for Kim Hamilton of UCLA. On the beam, Chris Takahashi for Utah, who's also a freshman. She's one of their top all-arounders, but she did have an ankle injury a few weeks ago. But she might be babying a little bit. You know, Kathy, Chris isn't intimidated by the tradition of excellence here at Utah. She just says she's going to go out and do her job. Well, that's definitely the right attitude to have. Look at the flexibility she's showing here. Now, you've got to remember that six girls compete for the team. Only five scores count, so they do have that one routine that there could be a break in, but the, then the rest count. So full twisting dismount. Good, solid routine. Chris Takahashi of Utah. Do you think they'll keep that one? It all depends. It was a good, solid routine. There wasn't that much difficulty in the routine. But it's sure good to start off with one like this. And her score? A 9.4. Not bad right off the bat. And on the bars, Lucy Wiener for Georgia. This is a great event for Lucy. She's been one of our country's best on this event. In fact, she was a member of our 1984 Olympic team, but suffered two knee injuries, actually, that kept her out of the competition. She's moving quite well. Look at that move. Straddle vault over, and she catches in an eagle grip. Cast to handstand. Toe on to handstand. Toe on front with a half dismount. Beautiful landing. The Georgia fans here in Utah love it. Dynamite routine. She really has beautiful, effortless swing, and she's known for her innovative moves, like this one. Straddle vault over, catches an eagle grip, and straddles back over the low bar. I've only seen one other gymnast perform that skill. All right, now Lucy's got an injured ankle, Kathy. Let's see how it affects her dismount. Really shouldn't affect the dismount. It's a front with a half. She spots the landing, and it's perfect. Unfortunately, it will take her out of two other events, and I think Georgia could miss her on those two events. But right now for Georgia, Lucy Wiener turns in a big 9.7 on the uneven parallel bar. Super performance. Meanwhile, already over on balance beam is Lynn Letterer for Utah. She's a junior. It's an aerial walkover. Is that a moonwalk? <laughs> Shows you can have a little <laughs> bit of fun with your audience, even when the competition is as intense as it is right now. Speaking of intensity, this is usually where Utah takes advantage of their competition. They're very mentally tough on this event. They're just not going to give anything away. She looks real confident. She's moved very steady so far. Setting up for a dismount. It's a time-warning bell, meaning five seconds to dismount. Round of double twist and a good landing. 
Lynn Lederer with that Mary Lou Retton smile is a real crowd pleaser here in Utah. And while we're waiting for her score, let's go over and look at Tanya Service, UCLA sophomore, on the vault. Now, in a team competition this close, every tenth is precious, so we're looking at good, strong landings. So Sukahar with a full twist, good landing. Let's go back and check in with Lynn Lederer, who's just received her score, a 9.5 on the beam for Utah. That's got to be a real confidence builder right now for the Utes who are looking for their seventh straight title. The thing that's been good about this team, though, is whenever we've had a big competition, they have seemed to rise to the occasion this year, as teams have in the past. But the national championship is always a unique experience. It's not like any other meet during the year, and so you never know how they're going to respond until, it's, until you get there. So Coach Morrison and the Utes are really giving this crowd something to cheer about here in Salt Lake City. And after two rotations, George is in the lead, but with a 9.55 performance on the vault by Tanya Service, UCLA is off to a good start. And we'll be back after this message and a word from your local stations. We're back in Salt Lake City's Special Events Center where we find Trina Tenty, a senior from UCLA, up first on the uneven parallel bars. Trina has really good swing on the uneven bars. That was a toe on handstand to a stalder handstand. Straddle vault with a half twist. She's moving quite well. Good leadoff batter for UCLA here. Cast a handstand. Toe on handstand to a stalder front with a half dismount. Really giving UCLA some momentum at this point. So going into the third rotation, let's take a look at the current standings. Now, Georgia's still in the lead, but remember, they have a bye. So now the rest of the field has a chance to close the gap. Trina Tenty on the bars with a 9.45 for UCLA. Over to the floor with Chris Takahashi for Utah. If Utah has a weakness, it's here on floor. They don't have the level of difficulty that, say, Georgia or UCLA have. But their strength is consistency. Here's your first tumbling pass. Height double back. Now, they can't afford to make those little mistakes, can they? No, not at all. It's not like the past years where they can walk away with the championship. Here comes your middle tumbling run. A double twist. Little sloppy on the landing. And those tenths are going to add up. The floor is a good event for Chris, normally. It's normally a very good event. She is working on that ankle, though. It's a little sore. Oh, that's bad. That's going to cost her and the team. A major fall. Preparing for her last tumbling run. And a full twist. Not as difficult as some of the other endings that we've seen. Very unfortunate mistake in there. Chris Takahashi, a freshman at Utah. A smooth ending, but a rough routine. It could prove to be a very costly one for the Lady Utes. Now watch in the replay. She does a back handspring, stops in a handstand, and should complete a pirouette on her hands. She's a little off and collapses. And it's a fall. It's a major deduction, close to a half a point. An 8.85 for Chris Takahashi. The crowd is booing. I don't think they realize exactly the severity of the mistake. Okay, now, preparing to mount the bars, Birgit Shear from UCLA. The pressure is really on Birgit because teammate Kim Hamilton has fallen. Opens with a very unique move. That was a back up rise to a free hip. Now, here's the reverse heck. She is so strong here. Cast, free hip to handstand. Giant swing, and a tough double fly away with a good landing. Birgit knows she's done a good job, and you know, that should help get UCLA back on track. Now on the beam, Kathy Bilodeau is standing by chatting with Alabama coach Sarah Patterson. Let's 
let's go back and get Birgit Shear's score a 9.6 on the uneven parallel bars. Back to Bilodeau on the beam for Alabama. There's a little added pressure here. They've already posted an 8.9 on this event, and they'd like to drop that score. It's back walkover, back handspring. Very costly for Alabama. And that's just what Alabama coach Sarah Patterson was talking about. She said Alabama couldn't afford to make those little mistakes. This is Jill Stewart, a freshman, on the floor for Utah. It's her first tumbling run. Layout, pike double. Very nice. Notice she was laid out on the first somersault and then piked around the second. They really need a good performance here. Coming off of Chris Takahashi's routine, they want to pick that up. She's got a few little stumbles here and there. Front, through to a double twist. Good middle pass. Just want to note here, Kathy, Kathy Bilodeau from Alabama did get back up on the beam after we saw her slip and fall, and she managed to turn in an 8.9 performance for Alabama. Giving a little bit away in her dance. Not quite as clean as it could be. It's a last tumbling run and a double twist. One of the more difficult dismounts done here. Okay, not a bad routine. The hometown crowd appreciating the University of Utah's Jill Stewart, a freshman. Let's take another look at Jill's first tumbling run. It's a layout pike double back. She'll stay laid out on the first somersault and then pike it in for the second. Very nicely done. So Utah bounces back on the floor with a 9.45 score for Jill Stewart. And after three rotations, we're halfway to the finish line in this NCAA Women's Gymnastics Championship. UCLA with a narrow lead over Georgia and six-time defending champion Utah right in the hunt. And the banks of the fourth rotation here in the Special Event Center. Keep in mind that both the Bruins and the Utes are on a bye. And we begin with Georgia on the balance beam. And here we see coach Suzanne Yachlin in her fourth year at Georgia, preparing to watch the performance of Debbie Greco on the beam. This is a crucial event for Georgia and a very important routine. It's very difficult to start off your team on balance beam. You want to start with a high score to build on and develop some confidence and team spirit. Debbie's a sophomore, and balance beam is her strongest event. So far, I've really been impressed with the quality of gymnastics we've seen here. I think we're witnessing a quantum leap in collegiate gymnastics. Kathy, I've even noticed a big difference between last year and this year. The girls are so much better. And the level of difficulty is incredible, particularly with this Georgia team. They probably have the most difficulty in their routines of any other teams. That was a tick-tock into two back handsprings. She's moving very well, a lot of confidence. It's a straddle jump. A little shaky. Here's her dismount, round off, layout with a full twist. Good, solid routine to start off with. And these Georgia fans have traveled a long way. They're rewarded with what looks like a good performance by Debbie Greco on the balance team. This is a critical stage in the competition for Georgia. And a 9.35 for Debbie Greco. So at the top of the fourth rotation, Georgia is off to a very good start. We'll be back shortly. But first, let's go to Tim Ryan for a report on the men's individual and all-around competition. A difficult moment for Georgia's Lucy Wiener. While we were away, she had some trouble on the balance beam and only scored an 8.7. Let's look at what happened. Because of that sprained ankle, she had limited training time on this event. She's doing a back handspring layout step out, a very difficult move, little off to the side, and caused a fall. So Lucy's score of 8.7 really puts the pressure on Georgia and on Andrea Thomas, who's on the beam now. 
Andrea is really used to being able to handle pressure. She was a 1984 Olympian for the Canadian team. So back handspring, layout, step out. Good start. Coach Yachlin says it's obvious why Andrea made the Olympic team in 84. She pays attention to every detail of every routine. This is a tough position to be in when you've already had a fall on this event and you're the last person up, you know you've got to come out with a good performance. So one and a half pirouette on the hands. Kathy, how difficult are these tricks? Well, the move she just did, the pirouette on the hands, is, is quite difficult. And her first move, back handspring layout, is difficult. One arm front walkover. She's got a good routine going so far. Now, if she can just hit a good dismount. Round off, double twisting dismount, excellent. Very difficult move. Great performance by Andrea Thomas. These Georgia fans know they're in it for real. Their Lady Bulldogs are contenders. What's remarkable about this team is none of the girls played it safe and took out their hard moves. Georgia's not counting a single break on balance beam. And look at this, a 9.7. Certainly one of the highest scores we'll see here. So after four rotations, Georgia takes the lead while the favorites sat out the rotation. We talked with their coaches just a couple of minutes ago. You've got a full point lead over Utah going into balance beam and floor exercise, the two pressure events. Your feelings about that? Oh, that's kind of a dream come true. I just hope that we, we take advantage of that and stay calm and do the job there. It's going to be a little hard. Utah's on vaulting at the same time. This arena will be noisiest when we are on balance beam. Um, they're focused. They know what they have to do. They're kind of pretending they're back home in Polly. Well, we're going to have to be spectacular. We've got to come out. We've got to kind of regroup and come out and be much more aggressive with the last two events. Uh, it's going to be tough, to be honest, to make up a point, and even six-tenths of a point on those two teams is going to be tough. Uh, I think for us to make up that much, we're going to have to hope that they make a little mistake somewhere along the lines, and then we'll take advantage of that, hopefully. So, Kathy Johnson, at least right now, it looks like UCLA is in a pretty good position to take over the lead. UCLA went into the third rotation with a very comfortable lead. Six-tenths of a point ahead of Georgia, a full point ahead of Utah. However, Georgia just competed wonderfully on the balance beam. That's going to put a lot of pressure on UCLA. They still have to compete on the balance beam, and sometimes that event has proved to be very costly. All right, for the moment, Georgia at least can breathe a little easier, and UCLA still has its work cut out. That's Georgia coach idea. Suzanne Yachlin inspiring her troops. And you might not have noticed, but yeah. some of them are wearing yeah. bulldog yeah. earrings. They just sort of came about in the last day before we left to go to nationals. It was the smaller earrings as a gift to the team to remind them that, that they should be Georgia proud, and that's what we all are. And then the bigger ones for me, just because, you know, I feel like anything you wear or anything you do, if it's noticed, then it was worth doing and wearing, whether, it, whether it, people like it or don't like it. It doesn't matter if it's noticed. Well, notice the coach isn't wearing her bulldog earrings today, but also notice that Georgia is in the lead and going into this fifth rotation, the Bulldogs are entering their final event on the floor. Number one seated UCLA is on the beam and six time defending champion Utah is on the vault. And here's Karen McMullen for UCLA on the beam. It's really difficult to understand how close this competition is because of the setup. Georgia has competed on one more event than any of the other teams. But UCLA can really recapture the lead. But they've got to perform past the standard Georgia has already set on the balance beam. Karen's doing quite well so far. Back walkover, back handspring, back tuck. Little bobble, but not much. Karen's a senior, so this could be the last time we're seeing her competing on the college a level. A senior and a very steady performer, usually, on this event. Another slight bobble. That one's a little bit more costly than the one before. Okay, we're going to leave Karen McMullen on the beam for a moment because Utah's Sonia Hone is getting ready to vault. Nice. Full on, full twist wow. off. Not a very difficult vault, but as you notice, it was a good landing. Now let's go back to Karen McMullen, who's still on the beam. 
She's recovered well from that one bobble. Working very steadily now. Preparing for a dismount. Two back handsprings into a full twist. And a strong finish for UCLA's Karen McMillan on the balance beam. A great way to top off a super career in gymnastics. Okay, now let's get the numbers on Sonia Hone. A 9.5, very strong performance for Utah. And for McMullen at the same time, a 9.3 for UCLA. And our leaders, Georgia, are on the floor. Here's Andrea Thomas. Now, as I said early, Georgia has tremendous difficulty on this event. That is going to be very costly for Georgia. It's an alternate through to a double bat, short on the landing. Kathy Andrea was the heroine for Georgia on the beam. What's happening here on the floor? Well, it's a sign of a really good team that they can make up for another person's weakness. Her strength was on balance beam. She made it for Lucy Wiener. Lucy Wiener came up with a big score on the uneven bars. We have a few fairly high scores leading into Andrea's performance, but not really a big score that we're looking for. Here comes her middle tumbling run, a two and a half twister little off on the landing. Do you think they're a little too excited? I have a feeling that's part of it. They know they're right up there in contention for the lead. I think they're trying to pour it all in right now. Little stumble. Here's her last tumbling run. Double twist. All right, that's Andrea Thomas for Georgia on the floor. And Georgia's certainly having its problems. While we're waiting for Andrea's score, let's take a look at Kim Hamilton. UCLA is having its problems, too. Kim's being consoled by Coach Jerry Tomlinson after a disappointing performance on the beam. Kathy, let's see what happened. There's so much pressure involved in a team competition when there's five other girls, depending on your score. I've seen her do this skill many times. That handspring layout, way off to the side. She usually never misses that. So number one seed, UCLA, now in deep trouble. And Andrea Thomas for Georgia sees her score a disappointing 8.7. At the same time, Utah's Tina Herman is standing by for her second vault, but her first attempt was a disaster. She had problems with rotation on this vault. It's a handspring front. She just doesn't quite make it around and sits it down. All right, now under pressure, Tina gets another try. Good, strong run. Nice rise off the horse and a good landing. Much better. Very typical of Utah gymnastics. They do moves of medium difficulty, and they do them extremely well. Now let's watch this vault again. Watch the rise off the horse. Good height, rotation, and distance, and a superb landing. And Utah's Tina Herman nets a 9.4 on the vault. So the six-time defending champs are definitely going to stay in this thing till the end, placing a pretty tall order on 4-foot, 10-inch Kareen Wright, who's getting ready to compete on the floor for Georgia. To put themselves in a position to win this, they have got to come up with a big performance here and erase that 8-7. Anyone can do it, Corinne can. She's the best tumbler in this meet. Watch this first pass. Extremely difficult. Double layout, and she nails it. Off to a great start. Here's your second tumbling run. Nice high double twist. According to Georgia coach Yachlin, Kareem's greatest strength, Kathy, is endurance and stamina. I think we're gonna test this endurance. I understand if she hasn't changed her mind, she's going to do a double back at the end of her routine. Very difficult. Curran's a little weak in the dance area. She more than makes up for it in the tumbling. I'd like to see a little better toe point. Here it comes now. Last tumbling run. Good speed, and a Incredible. high double back. Unbelievable. How high up the floor do you think she is? <laughs> I'm not even gonna venture to guess. 
way up there. Great performance. Corrine loves it. The crowd loves it. An exciting finish for Georgia. That could do it. That could do it. Let's take a look at that last pass. Now remember, this is the end of her floor routine. Look at the speed and dynamics of this tumbling pass. Way up in the air. And a perfect landing. Corrine knows she's done a good job here. And there it is. A 9.65. Great score. That could very well do it, Ann. So Georgia's in the clubhouse. And if you notice, UCLA has dropped down to third with still another fall from the balance beam. So now it's up to the second place Lady Utes to see if they can make it seven titles in a row when we come back after this message and a word from your local station. Utah on the bars, UCLA on the floor. This is the sixth and final rotation. Here's where we stand. Georgia is in the lead right now. But look at the Lady Utes. They don't seem to have a care in the world. And just maybe the Lady Bulldogs from Georgia have the toughest job right now. They've just got to stand by and wait and worry. And Utah's coach Mars and his team, they're going into a good event for them. They need a little better than a 9-5 average. And that's very possible for this team. All right, now this is Cheryl Weatherstone on the bars for Utah. They're trying to get in a position to drop a 9.0. She's moving quite well. She's a little short on that first handstand. Giant swing. Nice transition from bar to bar. Cast up. Another giant swing. And a double twisting flyaway. A beautiful dismount. Boy, did she stick that landing. Another good routine for the Lady Utes. I'm really impressed with this team. They're not giving up without a fight. What a performance for the British Olympic team member. Let's take another look at her dismount. Here's a giant swing, picking up speed. She swings through the bottom. It's a layout with two twists and a great landing. And just when they need it most, a 9.5 for the Lady Utes from Cheryl Weatherstone. And Georgia continues to watch as Lynn Letterer takes her turn on the bars for Utah. Lynn needs to hit a solid routine here so she can set Chris Takahashi up so it's even possible to take over the lead. It's a free hip to handstand, cross chain to a front somersault. It's a little rhythm and form break there. No major mistakes, though. Free up to handstand. Giant swing. To a pike comb in each dismount. A little hop on the landing. But another strong performance. And Kathy, you said this was going to be close, but is it going to be enough? It's hard to say, Ann. She did have a few form breaks, a little rhythm break, and a hop on the end. Here's her cross change to a front flip regrasp. And she dropped a little soon, broke form in the legs there, but recovered actually quite well. So Lynn Lederer score a 9.4 on the bars. And Coach Greg Marsden knows he's got one shot left. And it lies with Chris Takahashi. But first, let's go over to UCLA's Jill Andrews on the floor. Jill's very strong in this event. That was a front tuck through to a pike double and a perfect landing. You know, number one seed UCLA was the favorite to win this whole event. But Kathy, right now, frankly, they're long shots. Jill would need a 9.9 .9 on this routine to set their last competitor, Tanya Service, up to need a perfect 10-0 score. Quite frankly, that's next to impossible to do. Here's her second tumbling run. A pike double and another good landing. This is really a dynamic performance for Jill. And if they can't quite meet all of the expectations this year, there's always next year. UCLA is a really young and very talented team. They did have some misses here, however, but they showed some really good work, so next year should be good. Preparing for her last tumbling run. Jill put together a really fine performance here on the floor, but it's just not a 9-9.
Now, quite literally, Utah's fate is in this young lady's hand. She's Chris Takahashi, and she needs a 9.95 to tie the Lady Utes with Georgia. Watch this first move, a nice high Jaeger and a perfect catch. And she continues to move right out of it. Good routine so far. I really find it extremely difficult, though, for her to pull off a 9.95. Here comes her dismount and a front with a half and good landing. But now the question is, Kathy Johnson, was it good enough? No, I don't think so. But we'll wait and see what the judges say. And like the rest of us, Georgia waits also for the final results when we come back. Oh. But winning takes hard work and a lot of discipline. I know one thing. Drugs never made a winner out of anyone. They just make you a big loser. I'm not going to let drugs get in my way. I'm having too much fun for that. I know I'm a winner. I've said no to drugs, and I'll say it every day of my life if I have to. Why don't you say no, too? After all, you can't be a hit when you're high. Something to think about from the NCAA. Well, it's official. Georgia's Lady Bulldogs, the new NCAA champions, and now the six-year reign of the Lady Utes is over. It was the second closest margin of victory in history. Chris Takahashi's final score of 9.6 on the bars just wasn't quite enough. And so here's the final standings. Georgia, Utah, and UCLA winding up third. Right now, Kathy Johnson is with the winning coach. Suzanne, congratulations on a great victory. We talked a little bit earlier that you guys had the potential to go either way. You threw the hard tricks. What do you think was the key to the victory? Well, for one thing, prior to the competition, we, I read to them the part in the newspaper about us not being able to hit, and that being sort of a nemesis, that we had a lot of difficulty, but we couldn't put it together consistently, and, and that really fired them up first off. And then when we found out that we were four tenths behind in the, mid, in the midway of the meet, the girls just got together on their own, and, and you know, they just decided that they were going to take charge. They were going to set the pace on beam and make everyone compete up to their level. And that's what they did, starting with Debbie Greco. I mean, it was just the best performances we've ever had on beam. Thank you very much, and congratulations again. A little bit of a surprise. You guys came in second. The winning streak is broken. Well, I'm tickled to death. Our kids, we really struggled on the first two events, and like I said, we were going to have to be spectacular in the last two to even put ourselves back into it, and I think we came pretty close. I was, again, it's been a group that just never gave up, and I'm tickled to death with, with uh, second. I think that that's, George is a great team. They did a good job. They deserve to win, and I think we did a good job, uh, and I'm happy. So Georgia hoists the 1987 NCAA Championship Trophy, an exciting competition. Kathy, some final thoughts. Georgia surprised a lot of people with their level of difficulty and by putting together a consistent performance. They made few mistakes, and when they did, they came up with outstanding performances to discount them. And quite frankly, that was the key. And so that's it from Salt Lake City. Tim Ryan will be back with more after this. Hey, where are we? As premier gymnasts.